Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. By now, many of you have heard the story of the journalist and writer Kevin Roos. He crashed an exclusive Wall Street fraternity in in initiation night. We're showing some of the photos of the party atmosphere. Um, we'll show them in a second. In inductees and in drag and performing skits. Some of those intent attending were the CEO of AIG, founder of Home Depot, and former mayor of New York and billionaire Michael Bloomberg. We're now joined by Kevin Roos. He's a writer for New York Magazine. His most recent book is titled Young Money. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So Kevin, we wanted you to have a chance to kind of tell some of these stories of uh, what you saw and what transpired in this party, you, uh, this Wall Street party you snuck into. Um, and, and we're gonna show some of the names of uh, the people who, who attended this, this party and are part of this Wall Street fraternity. Kappa Beta Phi, um, and specifically uh, the chair, uh, billionaire Wilbur Ross. Go ahead and, and, and get right into it. So this was a secret society of Wall Street executives that was 80 years old. It was founded in uh, 1929, and um, and it's uh, it's a society that consists of many of the people who run the global economy, who uh, manage billions of dollars in money at hedge funds, private equity firms, and big banks. Um, so I heard about this, and I decided I had to at least try to go. Um, each year, they gather for one dinner where they induct new members. Those members are required to dress up in drag, uh, put on skits and musical acts, and basically humiliate themselves in front of the veteran members. So I rented a tuxedo, and I went over to the hotel where it was being held, and, uh, and I walked right in. It was amazing. And uh, who is Wilbur Ross? And talk about your interactions with him, because he basically offered to, um, in a way, uh, bribe you with inside information, with being a source if you didn't write about this. Well, Wilbur Ross is a billionaire uh, investor. He's uh, been around Wall Street for a long time. He's very well known. And he was the, that year's leader of the, the dinner. Um, and so I, I witnessed this whole thing, uh, off-color jokes, uh, sexist humor, um, jokes about the Occupy movement, things like that. And afterwards, I, out, you know, I got outed. I, people found out that I was a reporter. And Wilbur Ross sort of snuck me off into the hallway and said, look, you know, if, uh, you, know, if, you, uh, if you don't write about this or if you take it easy on us, um, you know, the people in this room could be very good sources for you and, and I'll pick up the phone anytime you need. So he was basically, you're right, saying, uh, you know, I will bribe you in order to, to get a better treatment out of this. And there's another main character in your piece, uh, Michael Novogratz. Um, who is he and what was your interaction with him? Well, he was the one who outed me. Uh, so he um, he's a billionaire hedge fund manager with Fortress Investment Group, and he was seated at my table at this dinner. And um, and after uh, you know most of the skits and, and things had played out, um, I was taking a picture with my phone, and he sort of stopped me and said, "Well, who are you?" So I identified myself. I said, "I'm a reporter with the New York Times," and um, and he proceeded to sort of stand me up and say, "You're not allowed to be here," um, and give me your phone. He wanted to destroy the evidence. So I said, no, you know, I, you can't have my phone. And he, and he sort of got belligerent and, and he was, uh, you know, grabbing my lapels and, and it seemed like about to be physically violent with me. And that was when Wilbur Ross pulled me away and started offering to give me things in exchange for uh, treating them fairly. And so we looked into a little bit of, of Novogratz's background. He's given um, thousands of dollars both to Democrats and Republicans, um, 2400 in 2010 to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, um, 2000 in uh, 2012 to Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Um, he's given um, several thousand dollars to Democrats for Education Reform, which promotes uh, the privatization of public education, charter schools. Uh, so as a lot of these figures are giving money to both the Democrats and Republicans. In, in a, and so what's your, what's your response to that? Well, this is not a, a political organization, Kappa Beta Phi. It's, it's a professional one, and, and everyone who works there, you know, works on Wall Street, and they span the, the range from Democrats to Republicans and probably, you know, everything in between. So I don't think, you know, it's fair to draw conclusions about the 
political leanings I think, as a whole. Um, I will say that I think that there's sort of a, a political class in New York uh, made up of these wealthy Wall Street donors who tend to support both parties. They're sort of hedging their bets. You know, whoever tends to win, um, they want to be in league with. And so they, you know, sometimes will donate to both sides of the aisle. Right. And critics would say that uh, they that both political parties are really protecting this group's interest because of the vast donations they're giving to both. You could say that. I think there's certainly evidence that uh, Wall Street has undue influence in Washington. But what I thought was interesting, and so this is the thesis of my book, and for my book, I, I followed eight young bankers um, around for three years, um, was that this is actually a very, sort of a generation gap on Wall Street, that not everyone thinks like this. This is sort of an old, um, obsolete generation of Wall Street executives. Um, the new people coming up through the ranks are much more conscientious, and I think they tend to be a little bit more progressive in their politics. Talk more about what you took away from this experience and, uh, and um, more about, what, about this young generation and perhaps their interactions at, uh, at events like this. Well, the young people weren't invited to events like this. This is purely for the CEO class. Um, but, but what was sort of interesting to me, and one of the things that I think is very telling, is that when I when I explained what had happened at this dinner to some of my eight young sources, um, you know, I expected them to be jealous or to say, you know, how do I get into this thing? Um, but they were sort of they were just as offended as I was. They said that's ridiculous uh, that this, something like this would go on, um, and they thought it was. It sounded like sort of Occupy Wall Street, like what the, what the Occupy movement would have invented if they wanted people to hate bankers even more. So they were just as embarrassed on the behalf of the members of this thing as I was. So Kevin Roos, you see, so you said you know there's a new generation of uh, these bankers coming up. And you know, and you you also you know also mentioned that events like this kind of give bankers a bad name. But um, do you think this this younger generation will kind of change? Will really change some of the structural problems? And you said they're maybe perhaps more more progressive. But you know, at a time of unprecedented inequality, um, of social services being slashed across the country, do you think these young progressive bankers are will have the even the power to change the structural problems that are? prevalent in our society today, the inequality. No, I think that's a much bigger issue than they're able to deal with. That's way above their pay grade. And I think that when it comes to reforming Wall Street, change has to come from the outside. Uh, Wall Street's culture is very strong, uh, very self-protective, and I, I don't think the bankers are ever willingly going to change their practices unless they're forced to. Kevin Roos, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jessel Noor. Thank you so much for joining us.